Aloha, everybody. This is Tiggy Maximus with Tiggy Maximus Talks, Episode 9. Um, I'm going to go over some of my predictions for UFC 276 happening at the T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas. Um, let's get into it, guys. Um, I wanted to start off with Andre Muniz going up against Uriah Hall. Muniz is 18 and 10. Um, he is the... Uh, no, Andre Munoz is 22 and 4, actually. My bad. Uriah Hall is 18 and 10. Um, the favorite in this one is Muniz. Um, if I had to pick between the two, I am picking Muniz to win this fight at, at 185. Um, the next fight after that, we have um, Tavares. At one, at one eighty five, he's nineteen and seven. Going up against Duplessis, who is sixteen and two. Duplessis is the favorite in this one. Uh, if I had to pick the winner of this one, I will pick Duplessis. To win that one. Uh, the next fight after that, we at the one hundred seventy pound weight class. We got Green at eleven and three going up against. The favorite, Gary, at 9-0. If I had to pick a winner in that one, I am picking Gary. So the fight after that, we got an old-timers fight at 170 pounds. We got Donna Cerrone at 13-16. and 16. We have Jim Miller at 34-16. and 16. Jim Miller is the favorite in this one, but I am picking Donna Cerrone to win this one. Uh, the next fight over that, it is the the featured prelim at 155 pounds. We got Riddell at 10 and 2 going up against Turner's 12 and 5. Uh, if I had to pick the winner of this one, I'm picking Turner to win. Uh, so now for the uh, the main card. The fight that's going to open the main card for 276 is Moon Haas, 19 and 7, going up against Sean O'Malley, who is 15 and 1. O'Malley is the favorite. Um, I have a feeling that O'Malley is going to win this one, so I'm picking O'Malley. I think his lightning fast jabs will help him win the points in this one. Um, I don't think it's going to be a, a, an early stoppage in this one. I think it's going to be um, a decision for O'Malley. So then that's in the 135 pound class. The next fight after that, we have an old timer, Robbie Lawler at 29 and 15 in the 170 pound division, going up against Barbarina, who's 17 and 8. It's actually even money between the two. Uh, but if I had to pick one, I'm picking Barbarina to win this fight. Probably by knockout, actually. Um, so uh, the next fight after that it is a fight in the 185-pound division. You have the favorite, Sean Strickland, at 25-3, and three, going up against um, a new... Um, a new UFC guy, really. He's been fighting for less than two years now in the UFC. Um, Alex Perea. He's 5-1. and one. Perea, uh, you may have known, he is known for having two knockout victories over Israel Adesanya, who is your 185-pound champion in the UFC. Um, but I have to pick one. I am picking Sean Strickland to win this one. I think he's going to bring a lot more to the table with grappling, with um, striking. And I think he is going to um, probably win this one by points. Um, and this is a great fight for Alex Perea to learn from. I don't think he's going to win this fight against Sean Strickland. So, and given that uh, Perea is kind of new to the MMA game, 
Um, this is a great learning experience. And, you know, Perea might actually stay, like, basically in the uh, the top top 15, top 10 from this fight. And he can only get better from here. And learning from this fight with Sean Strickland would be a good way to um, uh, get much better in the UFC. So it should be a good fight. Now we get into the co-main event. Um, it's for the 145-pound championship. You have Alex Volkanovsky, the champion, 24 and 1, going up against the underdog Max Holloway, who's at 23 and 6. Volkanovsky has beaten um, Holloway uh, two times already. This is the third fight in the trilogy. If I had to pick a winner in this one, it's going to be a hard one, but I'm still sticking with Volkanovsky winning this third fight, and this will probably end their trilogy. Um, it'll probably be by, by points, a unanimous decision. Now for the, for the main event, it is for the 185-pound championship. You have the champion, the favorite, Israel Adesanya, who is 22 and 1, going up against the underdog, Jared Candonier, 15 and 5. I've been kind of going back and forth with this. Initially, I said that Israel will probably win this 3 to 2 against Candonier, but I have a feeling that Candonier will win this fight. Um, he might win by decision, or he actually might knock out Israel Adesanya. So, uh that's my wall pick there i have a weird feeling about it um so that's my pick jared kandinier will will beat israel adesanya tonight so those are my picks for ufc 276 um you can make some good money off of these picks um should be fun i'm gonna be watching it at pitchers in richmond mosquitoes great food great bar great staff um Nothing really wrong about the place. Uh, free covers. That's always awesome on fight nights. Um, so if you ever have a chance to stop by pitchers, uh, do so. You won't regret it. Um, I also wanted to go over. Uh, I went to a few comedy shows. I want to go over it quickly here. Um, I did go to a comedy show, I believe, on... June 25th, it was at the Mission Brewery. The headliner was Zhao Ying Summers. She's good friends with Rachel Sterling, who I, I follow. They're both great comics. Um, they had four comics that night and um, it was a great lineup. Um, you had Rich Kassler and you also had Sarah Halstead. Um, great comics, funny from top to bottom. Um, Rachel had uh, great jokes. The um, great jokes and uh, the crowd was was pretty uh, receptive. Um, they knew that they had a good lineup of comics, so. I actually liked this a lot better, um, and it was a fun night. Um, now, if you do get to park close to the Mission Brewery, just know that there is a parking lot that does cater to not only the Potters games, but it also does cater to the, um, the nearby um, businesses. But just know that if you're going to go to the Mission Brewery and you can't find any other parking and that parking lot is the only option, you might have to pay 50 bucks to park in that parking lot next to the Mission Brewery because the Potters game is going on. So, um, but if you're lucky enough to find street parking, uh, you know, more power to you. Um, but yeah, uh, Zhao Ying Summer, she had like a 40 minute set as the headliner. Um, that's pretty awesome because she was just funny um, from beginning to end. Um, it's great to hear how how her, her um, upbringing was up to that point and what she's been doing. Um, so uh, yeah, I, I would say uh, I, I would see some of more of our shows, you know. And uh, she's pretty, she's you know, killing it. 
and then Rachel Sterling, always funny. Um, she did have some new material. Um, it's always nice uh, seeing her up there. And, you know, she's always real. You know, she's never, you know, not fake. Um, so uh, I actually had gone and seen her show three times in an eight day span. So um, she's pretty funny. And, uh, you know, it, by going to her shows, it, it does expose me to new comics who are talented and other comics who are, you know, making their way through the business. So um, it's a great experience. And, you know, I enjoy going to these comedy shows. Um, oh, okay. So I did go to a, uh, a comedy show um, in La Jolla, the comedy store. It was uh, Pretty Funny Women. Um, it was, yeah, Wednesday, June 29th. And uh, the headliner was Jennifer Sturger. You may remember her. She was a sports reporter um, uh, over the years. Not only does she do sports reporting, and um, she did work for AEW, All Elite Wrestling. Um, she also does some game shows, and she also does some photo shoots. She's a, a model, too. And uh, she has a hand in a lot of things right now. And um, she has some new projects coming up. And uh, she actually did once. Um, uh, she worked for um, Elite FC, um, which is Habib Normanetov's um, fighting league. Um, so it was kind of cool talking to her after the show. She had a great set. Um, I do remember some of her old jokes, but then she has a lot of new ones too. So it was kind of good that she mixed it in old and new. And um, I also remember there was, uh, I guess her name was Jennifer Mason. Um, she goes by Gen X and she had a good set. Uh, she did mix in some new stuff and some old jokes and uh, funny gal. Uh, she's also a licensed acupuncturist. So acupuncture and comedy, great combo, right? Um, there was a, a fairly new comic on the scene. Her name is... Uh, uh, Remy Escobar, um, cool gal. Um, I didn't get to talk to her after the show because I wanted to talk to Jennifer Sturger and I did catch uh, Jennifer Mason, but hearing her set, uh, she's pretty funny. Um, it's very refreshing actually. And uh, can't wait to see more of her shows down the road. Um, I do remember there was uh, Jenny Sykes and um, she was funny. Um, I did feel that it was mostly old jokes. So I don't remember anything that was new other than maybe referencing something new, but um, I, it just, re just reminded me of her last time I saw her at the Pretty Funny Women, which I think I saw her there actually. So uh, I think there was a Lynn Goodman. Uh, I think I remember her. Um, I think I remember it was mostly the same jokes from the last time I've seen her at Pretty Funny Women. So I don't know if it was just because given the time period, they can go with certain uh, material. Um, so, you know, if they had a longer set, I'm pretty sure they could put in some new material, but I guess you only, you're given five to 10 minutes. So, uh, and I get that. And um um, I did sit next to one of the moms of the comics. Um, I think the comic was Anastasia. Um, Anastasia was uh, was funny, uh, and I got to sit with her mom pretty much the entire show. So she was nice, um, uh, nice lady. I even told her uh, not to park at Vines because if you park at Vines, they might tow your car away. So. I rec recommended that she parked on Faye Street, which is around the corner from the comedy store. So, um, oh, and the host, and she produces the whole thing, uh, Lisa. Um, I think her name was Lisa Sunstrand or Sunstreak. So she runs the uh, the shows from, you know, between LA and San Diego. Um, I just call her Lisa, but uh, she's pretty cool. 
and uh she's great at, com at comedy too so and it's great that she's teaching new comics um you know make them feel comfortable be on stage telling jokes of all kinds so um it, it's really nice seeing her show and i actually might go to her show of hers up in la because um, i met this new comic who's also an actress um jen Liv. Uh, she's also good friends with Rachel Sterling. So I met her at a bar after a show with uh, Rachel Sterling at the Hollywood Roosevelt. It, we met at the Spare Room, which is above the Hollywood Roosevelt Theater. Uh, and so pretty cool gal. And um, hopefully I get to see um, the full um, full act with all the material. So I, I should be in for a fun night. Um, I have some more comedy shows I'm going to be going to. I heard that Am Corolla is going to be doing a show at the Mike Drop Comedy Store, um, comedy in Claremont Mesa Boulevard. That's going to be in October. Um, there's another show with, I believe it's Jose Barrientos. He's going to be on the same show with uh, Richard Sterling. I think that's on July 23rd. Um, the one with Pretty Funny Women with Jen Liv and Lisa. Uh, sun, sun stand, sun strip. Um, let's call her Lisa. I, I, I know her last name starts with an S, but I'm just gonna call her Lisa. But yeah, she's hosting that show that Jen Liv is gonna be on. I think that's gonna be on August 4th or 5th. So that actually works out for me. Um, I'm not working. Probably, I think it's on August 4th or 5th or something. So, um, so. I, although I think that day I would have to go up from San Diego to LA to watch that show, which shouldn't be a problem. Um, but also there's a show with Zhao Ying Summers also, I think on the 4th or 5th of August. So I had to check my schedule to see if I can go to both shows or not. Um, but yeah, uh, there was one no show. She was, a, she was sick on Wednesday, so she couldn't come up to the uh, Pretty Funny Women show in San Diego. Uh, Rachel D. Um, I met her a few times, seen her at a few shows. She's a really funny gal, and uh, she does split time between teaching, uh, writing materials, producing. Um, so she has like three things going on, I believe. So funny gal. Uh, can't wait to see her again. Um, so yeah, um, uh, oh, uh, there's Jerry Seinfeld. I think he's going to be at the San Diego Civic Theater. So I'm going to try to look into that to see, uh, if we can go to that show. So yeah, uh, Zhao Ying, Zhao Ying Summers, the Jen Liv, uh, Rachel Sterling again, Jose Boriendos, M. Corolla. Um, so yeah. Zhao Ying Summers, Jen Liv, Rachel Sterling. Um, oh, and uh, Gina Brillio, Brillion. Uh, she's coming to San Diego uh, in September. So she's there. Then Adam Perola, Jerry Seinfeld, and Jose Barriendo. So there's a lot of great shows coming up in San Diego and LA. And uh, hopefully I get to catch them all. Uh, uh, oh, uh, Sega Padres are kind of struggling. They've lost three of four to the Philadelphia Phillies. And then they split a series with the Arizona Diamondbacks, one to one. They should have won both games in Arizona. They actually led six to zero the first game, but the Padres gave up seven runs in. Uh, so that was hard. And then Padres won the next night. So they split with the Arizona Diamondbacks. And then this weekend is a four-game series in L.A. with the L.A. Dodgers. Um, Padres lost the first one, three to one. They lost last night, five to one. Um, Padres did have a 1-0 lead in the first game. And then they had a 1-1 tie last night. But Dodgers pulled it out. We still have problems with our offense. No Manny Machado, but um, he was – available and he did play both games actually but he's not the same right now because he's, he's coming off an injury and fernando tatis we're still waiting for him to finish his rehab and get back in the lineup um uh, so hopefully the padres can earn a split for this weekend series so they wouldn't have lost any year round going in you darvish is pitching tonight um 
He's going up against Tyler Anderson. And then tomorrow is Mackenzie Gore going up against uh, Clayton Kershaw. So hopefully the Padres can get a split. Um, NBA trades and free agency just started, and there's a lot of action going on. The notables here are that um, Zion Williamson, I think he signed a five-year, $231 million contract with the New Orleans Pelican, Pelicans. It's crazy because he had to play a lot of games for the Pelicans, but you can't, you know, you can't get rid of, you know, who's supposed to be the, uh, you know, the guy. So um, Kyrie Irving, I think he opted in to stay with the Brooklyn Nets, but I think he's going to get traded. Uh, I think his contract is like $36 million for next for this coming season, and then he becomes a free agent. Kevin Durant wants to request a trade shortly after hearing that Kyrie Irving was going to stay with the Brooklyn Nets, so they both might be leaving, actually. So Kevin Durant might be going to the Phoenix Suns or Dallas Mavericks. There's even some slight chatter he might go to the LA Lakers, which will blow my mind, actually. But there's also he news that he might be with the Miami Heat with Jimmy Butler. So the next few days should be pretty interesting to, to uh, keep tabs on, see where everybody's going to go. The Lakers did sign um, Toscano Anderson. They also got they also signed Lonnie Walker. So, so yeah. Um, um, Lakers they signed some other guys too. Scotty Pippen Jr. They also had signed. Uh, I think his name is Wayne Lynn Gabriel. Uh, so, and uh, I did mention before that they did draft Max Christie guard for Michigan State, which in doing so, they trade they traded in, traded back into the NBA draft 2022, but they had to give up a future second round pick. So, um, but yeah, uh, and then uh, John Wall did sign a big contract to be with the LA Clippers. He was benched for most of the second half of last season because they had too much money on the books for him and they couldn't get him to play, uh, you know, both ways. And so they thought that he was probably a liability and he wasn't. I don't know if he was, was not cooperative in, you know, with the team and coaches. So they just purely just sat him down for the rest of the season. So I'm pretty sure the Houston Rockets got, you know, they're glad to not have to play him and then just let him just, you know, get paid what he get paid. I think it was like buyout contract or something. He probably didn't get paid um, six million um, as part of the buyout, so he got most of his contract, but without six million probably. And um, uh, Bradley Beal, he signed a big contract to stay with the Washington Wizards. It was like over fifty million dollars a year. Um, for four or five years, so it's like 250 million he signed for or something. Uh, it was four years, it was probably over 200 million. It was five years, it was probably over 250 million. That's a crazy contract. Um, Jokic with the Denver Nuggets, he signed a five year, $270 million contract. That's crazy. Um, uh, Zach Levine, I think he signed a I think it was a five-year, $215 million contract with the Chicago Bulls. So um, I'm kind of curious to see what the Lakers are going to do because they might just keep all their chips. And now with their new coach with Darvin Ham, you might mold them to be a better team defensively and offensively. Um, so who knows? But the Lakers might try to make a blockbuster deal too. And uh, – um, can't wait. So, so uh, I'll be keeping tabs, and hopefully, I can go to the game later, 2022-2023 for the Lakers. I mean, it's been a while. I, I really want to go. Um, uh, so, finished talking about UFC. Finished talking about um, uh. Lakers, NBA trades, um, Sango Padres. Um, uh, oh, you know, tomorrow is the USFL championship. It's the uh, the revamped 
uh, USFL. So the, your championship is next uh, tomorrow, and and this will lead right into NFL training camp. But um, the USFL championship will be featuring the nine and one Birmingham Stallions, and they are going up against the six and four Philadelphia Stars. Um, keep tabs on this one quarterback, Jamar. Smith. He's the quarterback for the uh, Birmingham Stallions. And uh, uh, what's interesting is that the Philadelphia Stars kind of messed up the uh, matchup by upsetting the New Jersey Generals, who had not lost a game in nine weeks since they lost the opener. And they won nine straight and going to the playoff game. It was a war of attrition. And New Jersey Generals finally went ahead, uh, um, went ahead uh, 14 to 13 with a minute 42 left. And what do you know? Um, they punted to the Philadelphia Stars. And guess what happened? Philadelphia Stars ran it back for a touchdown on that punt. And they won 19 to 14. And they sealed it with an interception. Uh, within 20 yards or so from the end zone to end the game. So good win for Philadelphia Stars, but now with the Birmingham Stallions, I have a feeling Birmingham, Birmingham Stallions will win it tomorrow and win the, the first championship of the USFL, the revamp version. So those are my picks. And uh, um, I... I don't know if I talked about it last time, but I guess I should mention, um, I must have talked about it a little bit where um, uh, it was the UFC Vegas 57. It was last Saturday. Um, I wanna say I didn't talk about it, but I'll just talk about one fight. It was um, Gamrat versus Sarut Yan. That fight was back and forth. It was a good fight. Um, lots of uh, phases, lots of phases in the uh, fight game, um, grappling, striking, submissions. Um, so they had a lot of stuff going on. And um, well, I technically did not agree with the decision, but it was a split decision victory for um, Gamrat. Um, I think I had it rounds one, four, and five for uh, Sarukh Khan, and I had rounds two and three for Gamrat, but I could be wrong. So I did watch it once or twice. And it, if you leave it up to the judges, you, you leave it up to the judges and you got to deal with what they're going to say, right? But um, I mean, judges is not perfect, but, uh, you know, it was an exciting fight. And I wouldn't mind them running it back at some point down the road. So we'll see what happens with that. All right. Um, I guess I'm done talking now. I need to get ready for uh, UFC 276. So, um, uh, so this is Tiki Maximus signing off. Uh, bye, guys. <laughs>